In this presentation, we will record investments at market value using one account per category for our personal QuickBooks records. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are on the home page. We currently have the open windows open. We can open the open windows by going to the view drop down and selecting the open windows list. We're now going to open up our balance sheet by going to the reports drop down company and financials and taking a look at that balance sheet standard. We'll change the date range once again from the customer reports up top to 010120 to 12 That's January 1st through December 31st, the year we are working on. While we're here, we're going to go to the fonts and numbers, change the size of the text. At least I am. This is how I'm going to do it by going to 11 and say okay yes and okay so last time you'll recall that we entered the investments and we had our statement here we want to enter the investments as of the time period before we started entering data into our quickbooks system that being december before the january that we started entering data in our case the most conservative way to do so is to enter the data at cost because we haven't realized a gain or loss now, oftentimes, many people will want to record it at market value because that's the point in time that if it's stocks and bonds, we should be able to sell it at that at that amount. Although it fluctuates a lot, uh, it's, it is also something that we can be fairly certain of as opposed to a home or something like that because the stocks and bonds are actually being traded and they're exactly the same, unlike a home, which is all homes are different. So until we actually sell it, it's not really very easy to know what the market value of a home is. For the stock, you kind of have a fairly good idea because all the stocks are the same and they're currently trading for that amount. So in any case, we might want to record it at the market value. Easiest way to do that is just to do is just to use the one account and record it at market value. So what we'll do is we'll start with that. So we've already set up the investments accounts the in our grouped accounts, mutual funds and bond funds. And then we put the IRAs down here. We have three different accounts, but they're still grouped in the one account in that they're one account per group is what we're talking about with the one account thing instead of having a different account for each each type of account that we have and so that's what we've got so far and we put them in there at cost all we're going to do now is say let's change this and put it in place at market value and then we'll adjust it each time period because note if it's in there at cost then we don't really need to make any adjustments until we invest more then we'd have then we would want to increase it as we did here with the IRA. So we increase the cost by increasing the amount that we paid. But now let's put it in there at market value. We could track the market value by having a cost item and a market value item. That's the second step we'll do so that we can see what we paid and what our gain is. Uh, kind of like depreciation where we have a, a contra account in depreciation that will show you the cost of the equipment that you purchase and then how much it went down by or we could just net them together which would be the easiest thing to do so we we get less detail but that's what we'll start with that's what the easiest thing to do would be if we want to just track this information by uh by market value so to do that we're just going to double click on this item and we're just going to change the, i'm going to change the date to the prior period 2019 so that we could see this beginning balance. So now we have a zero in this item because we're at the beginning. This happened December of last year. I'm just going to double click on this now. And here's our data. So we, remember, we entered this into the register. Uh, but now we're going to go here. And this is what QuickBooks used uh, in order to enter this data. This form was used, the deposit form. So And, and so we're going to go back over to our file and just say, now I want to make it not the 18, but the market value, what it currently is valued at, 28,353. So we'll put that here. Instead of the 18, I'm just going to make this 28,353 to put it on the books at the market value. So let me just double check that, 28,353. I think that's right. So save and close. And yes, and OK. So now we have now that's a substantial difference, of course, in that and it could it may or may not be. It depends how long we've had the stock for and what the market's done, of course, and all that kind of stuff. So, but now we've put it on the books at the market value, and then we're going to do the same for the investments. 
So we'll go into the investments. Again, I'll make this 2019. Just change this 3000 for the bonds from, from the cost to the market value. Now we're going to track this information by market value. And we'll make this 3112 and save and close. Yes, yes, okay. There is that one. Now we've got one more, the 16,000 on the IRA. That one we're going to put on the books at the 21,002. So we'll go back over, uh, double click on it. Now it was 15 at the beginning. So if I double click on this, it was 15 and then we put more money in in January. So I'm going to make this back to 2019 and I'm going to change this 15. And this time it took me to our journal entry. That's fine either way. And we're going to make this one, uh, that 21 two. So it's going to be two one zero zero two and record. Yes. Yes. Okay. Closing this back out. And now note, we put it on the books here. It's going to be this 22 at the end of the day, because this is what it was at the, at the end of last year. And then we put another thousand in this time period. We haven't updated the current value. So if I, if I close this back out, in other words, now we've put the information, we've last updated this as of December before the January that we started entering data. And, and under this method, we're going to need to update this market value because it changes all the time. And we could do it periodically. We could do it monthly, which might be a, a good way to do it. We get a monthly statement and we just update the market value. Or we might do it uh, quarterly or even yearly, depending on how, how often we want to keep this, this information up to date. As we enter, as this happens, this is what we'll do next time. We'll see changes in the market value. And then our question is, how do we record those changes? Because we didn't cash it out. There's no cash being involved. It's just the stocks going up and down. So we could say, okay, the, if the market goes up, what do I do to the other side of it? Do I record it as income? Do I record it as not as income? Did I? So that's the question we'll have next time. So next time we'll, we'll go to January and February bank statements or, or investment statements, look at the change in the market value, adjust our books to that change, and think about the different ways that we can do so. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.